You saw me make these two molds in two previous videos. In the first mold, I made it in a multi-pour. If you zero call, I had to pour it four times to get the proper amount. The second mold, because I knew the correct amount, I could just mix up the whole amount, use that funnel, and pour it in one dump pour. And so we have two molds, very beautiful, and sort of an innovative shape. I've actually never made molds quite like these before. So now it's time to cast them because the only fun is seeing whether or not we, these molds will make good castings. So let's go ahead, fill these up. Now I just wanted to show you what I did here. You can see I backed this up with a piece of wood. And the reason for that was that this is kind of flimsy in here. I'm not liking this. So I didn't like the way the rubber bands would interact with the mold there. So rather than build a complete mold case, I just decided all that was necessary was just a piece of wood to back that up. Now I'll grab out some rubber bands here. And just let's put a band on to hold it in place. That just holds us, get this boy out of our way. Now, one rubber band will do the job of holding the wood piece in place. And that lets us go ahead and put the other bands on. So let's do that. See, I'm just putting them on. Just in between the wells, so you can see, I'm checking my parting lines. I gotta make sure, I want them, see how nice and tight they are? I want them to be nice and tight as I put these on. Always looking for that well-distributed gentle pressure business. Get the bands in place in the right place. Quick and easy. Get these bands in place. Okay, they are looking good and ready to go. Nice. Let's set these like this. And we are ready to pour them. Just like that, we are ready to pour them. Let me set it at this angle. So maybe you can see the pour a little better. Let's go mix up a batch of resin, then we'll pour these up quick. Okay, here's a handy trick. Uh, see these little marks right in there? That little line right there, line right there. Those two lines are the line that marks where I pour the resin to. And what those lines do is they prevent me from having to measure every batch. I can just fill. Here I'm filling in the A side. I can just fill to the line. And that saves me time. All right, got the A side done. Let's get the B side done. B side is well shaken. And let's pour it. And you just pour it. Right up to the line. Perfect. And that meters out the A side and the B side. And it's hard to tell on the camera, but I can tell you that there's less A in the cup than there is B because they weigh the same, but they are not the same volume. And so you have to know that about your system. All right, so let's pour this mold. Let's mix a resin. And what I like to do when I have a pre-mix like this is just dump it, because we're gonna go. We don't have a ton of time here. So we want to dump and go. Shake it, roll the cups. Let's mix this up get this thing poured. is not the first batch that I have poured. So I know for a fact that I want to do something here. So let's pour this. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to top them. I'm going to start just by pouring them. I'm going about as fast as I can go here. But uh, let's just go through. and pour them part way. The reason I'm gonna do this, I'll show you in a second what I'm doing, but I'm going fast as I can go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rock them back this way a little, just enough so I see the resin come pouring back out. And the reason I'm doing that is I know that I might catch a bubble. Okay, good. I think I shook those bubbles out of the nose. I've been catching tiny little bubbles in the nose. Now I can go ahead and they are getting warm, so I want to go. I want to go. 
because they need to get put into the tank quick, quick, quick. They need to get put into the tank quick, 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 quick. And boy, people are carrying on in the background. You can hear that I am not working by myself in my studio. Sorry for the background noise. Well, let's get these filled. Here we go. Come on. Let's get this filled and shot. So let's do it, do it, do it, do it. Now what happens if you come up short? This one's short. So what you do is you take a full one and you donate like that. You take a really full one and you donate it. And now you make sure that you have all of them full enough to fill all the way up. And they are starting to gel. You can see this resin is starting to gel. Let's go. Let's go put these in the tank. It's okay that they're gel as long as they're not solid. Let's put them in. Let's put them in. Get the lid. And away we go. All right, we're done. Let's let those cure up and we'll yank them out of the tank. All right, let's pull these out of the tank. Close the inlet valve. Open the outlet valve. Let the muffler do its job. Come on, tank. Do your thing. Here it goes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Put the lid down there for the time being. Let's see. Oh, look at Now, here's why I didn't build mold cases for these. The tank is a mold case. <laughs> I've never uh, had that happen. The other thing that I worried about that uh, I would have to cast them five at a time because they're too long to fit endwise, but it just happened that they fit perfectly in the tank. It's like I designed it for it. It's like I know what I'm doing. Look at that. So magnificent. All right, let's pull them. Let's pull these boys out. Hey, that's one. Get it up over onto the table. Get the other one. There it comes. All right, baby, come on out. There you go. All right, let's see what we got. This is the fun part. Let's pull it. Let's yank it. Let's yank these rubber bandies off. Now, sometimes I can get the rubber bands off and without getting resin trapped on them. And if I can, I'll reuse them. Uh, I often Sometimes you can see, sometimes the resin gets caught on the rubber bands. I rarely take the time to clean them because time is money and rubber bands are cheap. So I don't worry about them too much. But a lot of the rubber bands do come clean. And I also take the time to kind of take them off so that they're easy to put back on. But like I said, if I get a rubber band that either breaks and or gets a lot of gunk. Like these ones have a lot of gunk on them. Okay, that one broke. They both broke. Trash them. They're done. They've done their job. They lived their lives. They gave their life to the service of their country. Ah, they're very brave. Okay. Fun times. Let's look at these things. Let's look at these things come out of these molds. Oh, love pulling things out of the mold. Here we go. One, two, you can see, I don't, you know, spend my life pulling them out of the molds. I just go ahead and pull them. It's one mold. Six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. All right, put the molds aside and let's see what we got. Now, look at that. Look at that. Let's see, got a little tiny bit of flash there. Look at that. Look at that parting line. How's that parting line look to you? Parting line runs right along here and along there. Pretty nice, pretty clean. Let's look at them. How about this one? Let's look at a bunch of them. What do you guys think? Think those parting lines are nice and clean? Look at these castings. Look at these castings. 
Oh yeah, so clean. Okay, let's get the worst one. This one's got some flash. Here. Let's go. What's the worst worst one for flash? This one, the one I got in my hands. That's the worst flash I got right there. Can you see that? Can you see all that? Right there is the worst flash I got. Comes right off of the fingernail, and these are clean. These are so clean and so nice. Little tiny bits of flash. Now, what we do is we take them over to the sander wheel and we just deflash them. Okay, the next step in the process is to nick off the funnels. Let's go nick some funnels. Put them all in here. Carry him over to the funnel nicking machine. Beautiful. All right, we're over here at the jig that's going to cut these kids. Let's cut them. I have to say it, this saw has been a really pleasant surprise to me. I'm just amazed by how nice and clean the cuts are. I mean, that is just super duper. Not bad at all. Very, very minimal post-finish sanding on there. A Little bit of flash here and there, but boy, I tell you what, these things are so clean when they come out of the mold, and that is exactly what we want to see. You want to see these things be this clean. I saved the worst of the flash offenders <laughs> so you can see how effective the sandy wheel is at taking them off. Uh, this one might be the champion for bad flash. Look at that. Hideous, tremendous, vast quantities of flash. Let's see how fast we can take that stuff off. And that is why I love this flap wheel. That's how quickly and how easily this machine removes the flash. And remember, these are the worst offenders. These were by far the worst of the flash out of that whole batch of 100. So as you can see, they are just mighty nice. Now the other thing that this machine does spectacularly, despite the fact that the saw leaves a really nice finish, we still want to do the edges, which are a little bit sharp, and get that fully clean. So let's do that. This machine is great for this. Just like that, it's done. Super quick. Do another one. What I love about these wheels is that they're pretty gentle. You can bump your hands against them. You don't tear yourself up. They're not aggressive, so they sand plastic really well. All right, super nice. I'm going to go on and finish these up, uh, and then we'll get to the next step, which is drilling. Okay, we're staying at the drill press, but... As you can see, I've changed the setup. Uh, what this is is a drilling jig. I put the, dr the appropriate size drill into the chuck. And this drill jig is just made out of wood and magic sculpt. That's all that is. It doesn't look like much until you see how perfectly it cradles. The piece just falls in there. And so it, it just allows you to position this thing perfectly. We'll get some holes drilled. And this obviously is the hole for the string.
nice. All right, I'm gonna go on. These are drilled and ready to stain, and we'll do that next. I make a hell of a mess doing this. So for this, definitely want to wear gloves. I change my gloves frequently during this operation because it's such a mess. Paper towel is at the ready. Now these came out of the tank. They're just in a bucket of this stain and I put them in the vacuum tank. And then the quick way to get them out of this system is to just pour them into this basket and shake off the excess. Just dump them like that. Okay, so then we have them like this. Then the trick is to blot them. Go through half a roll of paper towel on this job. Just part of the expenses, but let's blot. Unfortunately, you're not done when you blot them. What we have to do now is go over each one, each and every one, and brush them. Make sure that the uh, string hull is free from debris. And you might have to go over them a couple of times, but you gotta brush each one, kind of give it an even surface. The blotting, Got rid of most of the extra, but left enough that we can blot with and make sure. I just go back over and over them, back and forth, back and forth. You gotta work quick. Now it's cool out and it's in and I'm in the shade. So I have time, a little more time than I might otherwise have. If it's a really hot day, you, you may even want to do small batches, but it's winter and it's cool out and it gives me enough time to brush each one. And that just sort of levels out the brown on them, makes an even surface. Sometimes they need to be extra blotted, a little extra blotting. You go quick, but you do have time if it's cool out. Sure, I get those holes blown out. Okay, now I can just go through them and make sure that I have the right amount of stain on each one. Just kind of look them over, all angles, even them out, brush them, get them, get them nice. If there's too much contrast on them, they'll look kind of plasticky. If the high spots don't have any stain on them, they look kind of plasticky. And if you get a nice even coat on them, they look, look a little better. Each one has to be brushed by hand. There's no getting around that. We haven't found a way to do them where they could just dunk them and let them drip dry and forget about them. This doesn't work. You've got to kind of touch each one. Make sure they look good. All right, and that's how we did them all. And then, take my gloves off, because I burn these gloves. Let's have you come along for the ride here, kids. And take them for a little ride out into the sunshine. Because they need to be out in the sun. They need to be out in the good, hot sun, even though it is December. All right, see this batch is probably all dry. This batch is dry, so this dry batch is dry, and this batch has been drying out in the sun. And that's the good solar powered way to get these things all dried up. Very nice, and that's the paint job. That's how we do it. To tie the strings, the easy way to do it is with a handy dandy string jig, which I made out of a box and a clamp. <laughs> that's as much as it needed. So all you do, basically, 
Let's just start here. Let's go. I gotta make 15 strings. This is an 18 inch long jig. And uh, so you go around once and win one loop, make a 36 inch loop. So it's perfect. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14, all right, 15. Beautiful, now all you have to do is grab your handy dandy utility knife and or scissors and just cut them. And just like that, I got 15 strings. <laughs> Perfect. Now that we got the strings cut, let's tie some tiki's. Pretty simple. You just run them through like that. Make a little whatever kind of knot. I have no idea what the names of knots are. What is this, a half hitch, a what, whatever? A, I call it a pretzel knot. It's a perfectly descriptive name. Tighten up the pretzel knot. You can't just tie a knot on these things. That isn't how it works. What you do is you tie a little pretzel knot on this side. And you're done. And this one's tied. Now the genius to this system is, if the knots are very far apart, you get a very short loop. So you can make like a choker, bring it up close to you underneath like that. If you want the thing to hang down further, you put the two knots close together like that. And then it hangs down longer. How genius is that? <laughs> Works like a champ. I didn't invent it, I just do it. I just do what I'm told, make these things the way they want me to make them. All right, that's one. You just go through, I've got a hundred of them to do. And it's the same drill. Make the little pretzel knot, see why I call it a pretzel knot? Looks like a little pretzel. Through the pretzel knot, under and over. Make the pretzel knot, now you got two pretzel knots. See that, got your two pretzel knots. What are those? Somebody in the comments, tell me the name of that knot. What is that? Is that a half hitch? What is that? I don't know. No idea. It's a knot. It works. I don't care what its name is. Okay. Done. All right. Three of them done. 97 plus more to go. And we're ready to go. Beautiful. I don't think we've talked about this before, but it's definitely worth talking about. When you do a production job, there's all these little hidden costs, stuff you don't think about uh, that robs your profits. And one of those things is cup waste. So what's cup waste? Cup waste is the resin that sticks to the insides of your mixing cups. Now I used plastic uh, mixing containers. So, so when the run, once the resin cured, I just popped it out of the container. But uh, look at all this waste. Resin's expensive. Resin's not cheap. And here are all the funnels that I cut off. Look at that. That's, that amounts to a pretty good amount of weight. I mean, there's a, you know, I'd have to weigh it, but it would not surprise me if that didn't amount to a pound or more of plastic. And this is pure waste. This is, you know, unrecoverable. Really, I don't really have a use for these little chunks of plastic. Uh, I used to keep them and, uh, you know, <laughs> after you build up a gigantic collection of junk plastic, at some point you, you know, decide you've got to purge your life and make some sense out of things and clean your studio and you just get rid of it. So the point is you got to budget for this stuff. You got to make sure that you plan in your budget. Even the stick, look at this, even the stick has stick waste on it. <laughs> so it's always money down the drain. It's inevitable, you can't get around it. It's part of the process, but you have to build it in. I build in about 10%. So whenever I have a budget for how much rubber I'm gonna use or how much resin I'm gonna use, I just add 10% to the cost, knowing that I'm gonna throw away at least that much. And I've weighed projects over the years and weighed stuff like this over the years enough to know that that's a pretty good estimate. Sometimes you waste more, sometimes you waste a lot less, but it's a decent estimate. So don't forget. Consider cup waste when you're making your budgets for your projects. All right, here's our job. 100% done, ready to go. Uh, as you can see, I tie them up in bundles of 10 like that. And the reason for that is that it uh, makes them easy to count. 
keeps the the, all the strings from getting tangled up. So there's 10 bundles of 10 pieces, so it's 100 pieces, that's this order. But I always overfill it. I'm gonna give them two extras. And the reason for that is uh, maybe I counted wrong. <laughs> that's always a possibility that I counted wrong, despite my 10-10-10 system. Uh, also something could get damaged in shipment. Something might have a flaw that I didn't see. Yeah, I just would rather give them a couple of spares than come up short. The last thing I want to do is have them call me up and go, you only gave us 99. And then I got to pack a separate box, make a separate trip, get shipping, yada, yada. I don't want to do it. I'd rather give them a little bonus. Plus, if you exceed people's expectations, uh, they're happier. They're delighted to get a couple of freebies. That's money in their pocket. Makes everybody happy and that's what we like to see. I told you guys a couple of weeks ago that I was going on vacation, but I had this job to finish and it had to be finished by now because uh, deadlines right now. And there were aspects of this project that I hope that you'd be interested in. So I uh, made a video. <laughs> I didn't take the two weeks off anyway and it, Pretty much, got to be honest, I, after a couple of days, I would have been bored anyway and restless and looking for something to do. So, oh well. Next week, we start a new year. I am super excited. Uh, we have a lineup of projects that I think is just fantastic. And uh, we're going to get going on those. Uh, if you'll recall, a few weeks ago, we started the snow globe project and I made a mold for it. And didn't cast it because I couldn't get the resin. Took forever to get the resin in, but I have it now. You'll see that next week. At long last, we're gonna see if we can't hollow cast a clear snow globe with urethane resin. Thanks for watching. It's New Year's Day. Happy New Year. Uh, I know we're all looking forward to a way, way, way better 2021. And we're very happy to leave 2020 in the dust. Uh, fresh starts and a uh, lot of optimism. Things are going great and I hope they're going great for you. I will see you next week.